next our next topic is scheduling algorithms okay our next topic is scheduling algorithms totally we have totally we have different scheduling algorithms so the first one is fcfs first come first serve next we have sjf shortest job first okay in shortest job first this is non preemptive non preemptive this is also same non preemptive FCFS. Whereas in this only we have another concept. It is preemptive. Shortest remaining time first. It is preemptive. Next one is a round robin scheduling algorithm. It is also preemptive. Next we have priority scheduling algorithms. In that we have preemptive, not preemptive. The, these two already we have discussed earlier. My example problems also we have discussed. Okay. Next we have multi-level queue scheduling and multi-level feedback scheduling. Okay. We will discuss this in detail one by one or one of the other. Okay. So first we will see first come first serve. Okay. The first two problem is first come first serve. As you all know, first come first serve is nothing but the element which was in data structures we have um, we have what's a queue? A queue is a linear data structure which follows first in first out strategy similarly here also first come first serve okay in a buffet in a buffet in a wedding if we go for uh, buffet meals so the person who stands first he will be served first the person who stands second will be served second okay similarly here also the same the process the process which has arrived first the process which arrived first will be served first that's why it was named after first come, first serve. Okay. So here these are the process numbers. Process 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Coming to the arrival time. Arrival time is nothing but at what time process P1 is arrived. Process P1 is arrived at 0 at the interval of 0 second. Process 2 at 4, 3 at 2, like that. Burst time we have already discussed. Burst time is nothing but the amount of time required for execution. Process P1 burst time is 5 means the CPU has to spare 5 seconds with process P1 for completing its execution. Okay. So this is Gantt chart. So we already discussed this is Gantt chart. This is Gantt chart. So we have to, uh, first we have to draw the Gantt chart. First, we have to draw the Gantt chart. See, so at 0 seconds, which process is available? At 0 seconds, only process P1 is available. Okay, process P1 is available. So, we will write 1, process P1. Or we will write P1. P1 is available. So, the first time is 5. Means, 0 plus 5, it is 5. Okay, fine. So, process P1 is completed its execution. Okay. At time interval 5, at time interval 5, all the process are available. But out of which, which came first? 0. Next 1, at time interval 1, process P5 came. So, process P5. So, its first time is 6, means 5 plus 6, 11. Okay. So, process P5 is over. Next, at uh, 0 at interval, process 1 came. At uh, 1, process 5. At 2, next is 2, process 3. P3 came. So, its uh, burst time is 1. So, 11 plus 1, it is 12. Okay. So, 3 is over. Next is 4. So, P4. P4. Its burst time is 3. 12 plus 3, 15. Okay, so P4 is completed. Last but not least is the process P2. Its first time is 4. So P2, its first time is 4, means it is 19. Okay, so we have completed the Gantt chart. Drawing the Gantt chart is very important. Because if you perfectly uh, draw the Gantt chart, automatically we can complete the problem. Okay. 
right so now completion time p1 is completed at 5 p1 is completed at 5 p2 19 p3 12 p4 15 p5 11 is the completion time Come to the turnaround time. Turnaround time is the difference between completion time and arrival time. So 15 minus 0, sorry, 5 minus 0, 5. 19 minus 4, 15. 12 minus 2, 10. 15 minus 3, 12. 11 minus 1, 10. So this is the turnaround time. Come to the waiting time, it is the difference between turnaround time and Burst time. So waiting time 5 minus 5, 0. 15 minus 4, 11. 10 minus 1, 9. 12 minus 3, 9. 10 minus 6, 4. Coming to the response time. At what time it was started? See, process P1 is started at 0. Arrival time is 0. 0 minus 0, 0. Next to process uh, 2. It started executing at 15. Arrival time is 4. 15 minus 4, 11. P3, it arrived at 11. It started at, sorry, it started its execution at 11. It arrived at 2. 11 minus 2, 9. P4, it started its execution at 12. Arrived at 3. 12 minus 3, 9. P5 started at 5, arrived at 1, 5 minus 1, 4. So if you observe here, the waiting time and response time are one and the same. We have already discussed in non-preemptive, in a non-preemptive scheduling algorithm, the waiting time and response time will be one and the same. Whereas in preemptive, they both differ. Okay. So since this first come, first serve comes under non-preemptive. This is non preemptive. This is non preemptive scheduling algorithm. So here, so here we have to calculate the average turnaround time. So average turnaround time we will add this 15 plus 5, 20, 30, 42, 52. So 52 divided by 5. So it is nothing but 10.4. Approximately 10.4 is the average turnaround time. Then average waiting time. So we have to add this. 11 plus 9 is 20, plus 9, 29, plus 4, 33. 33 by 5. around 6.6 .6. ok so this is the way how we solve first come first serve scheduling algorithm ok thank you our next algorithm is our next algorithm is shortest job first SJF shortest job first so here SJF is also it is also non preemptive. It is also non preemptive scheduling algorithm. Okay. So here also we have to start drawing the Gantt chart. Okay. So here shortest job first. The name itself indicating that shortest job first. So at a particular at a particular time slot, we have to check what are the processes available out of which the process which is having least burst time should be executed first. Suppose if there are three processes P1, P2, P3. P1, P2, P3. Suppose if P1 takes 10 seconds, P2 takes 15 seconds, P3 takes 20 seconds, if all the three processes are available, okay, so since P1 is taking less burst time, we have to execute P1 first. So here it is very simple, shortest job first. The 
process which is having less burst time should be executed first. Okay. So in also the same process. First we have to start drawing the gap chart. So this is a gap chart. We will start here. So at time interval zero, at time interval zero, there is no process available. So we have kept it empty. Okay. So we have kept it empty. We have kept it empty, right? For one second. At uh, time interval one, only process one is available. So by default, we have to execute process one. So process P one will be executed for seven seconds. One plus seven, it is eight. So process one is over. Okay. Now at time interval eight, all the processes are available. So we have to identify the process which is having least burst time. So if you see the process which is having least burst time, here one is there. So process P three should be executed next. P three is burst time is one. So eight plus one it is nine. So three is also over. Come to the next list. It is two means process four. So P four. Okay, right. So coming to the next list. It is process two. Burst time is five. Process two burst time is five. Eleven plus five it is sixteen. Come to the last is P five. Its burst time is eight. So this is the way how we have uh, drawn the gap chart. So here you should remember why we have left uh, the first slot as empty. Why? Because at time interval zero there is no process which is arrived which is arrived. Ah, uh, no process is available at zero at time slot or zero at second. Okay, that's why we have kept it empty. Okay, right? So now, so now we have to complete the tail. Uh, so process P one is completed at eight. P two sixteen. P three nine. P four eleven. P five twenty four. Okay. So next we have to calculate the turnaround time. We know the turnaround time is the difference between completion time and arrival time. So eight minus one seven, sixteen minus two fourteen, nine minus three six, eleven minus four seven, twenty four minus five nineteen. Similarly, the waiting time. Waiting time is the difference between turnaround time and burst time. So seven minus seven zero, fourteen minus five nine, six minus one five. Seven minus two five, nineteen minus eight eleven. So coming to the response time, response time is the difference between start time and arrival time. Process P one started at one, arrival time is one. One minus one zero. So process two, so it started at eleven, arrival time is two. Eleven minus two nine. Process P three, start time eight, arrival time three. Eight minus three five. So process P four started at nine, arrival time four, nine minus four five. So process P five started at sixteen, arrival time five, sixteen minus five eleven. So here also if you observe the waiting time and the response time are one and the same. Why? Because since this is non-preemptive, so in non-preemptive scheduling algorithm, the waiting time and the response time both will be one and the same. Whereas in preemptive they both differ each other. Okay. So here also we will calculate the here also we will calculate the average average turnaround time. So the average turnaround time is seven plus fourteen twenty one plus six twenty seven plus seven thirty four fifty three. So fifty three by total number of process five. So we get ten point six. Okay. Similarly, average. Waiting time. So average waiting time nine five plus five ten nineteen twenty thirty thirty by five. It is six, and here it is ten point six. Okay. So this is shortest job cost. Okay. Next. Next we will see. Okay, right. With this, we will complete. Thank you.